Marshall, what do you think about Darlington Raceway these days? It's different than it was 73 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> no, it looks pretty nice. Uh, it's hard to imagine all the improvements and everything they've done. I was here, uh, of course, as you guys know, I, I ran the first race here uh, in 1950. And uh, we pretty much ran down, you know, on the flat track and uh, not up on the bank. Uh, the second year, I was here in 51 too, uh, we started running a little higher. But up close to the rail, uh, the blacktop that was rock sticking out. They, you know, they, when, the, when they blacktop it, they did, did get them all crushed. I was, a little, I was a little afraid to be hard on tires, so I ran a little under that. So. A lot different nowadays. So that, that story about the lady in black, that, did that come from the black top that they used to put on the track? Oh, I don't know if that was a connection or not, but uh, Herb Thomas, uh, he was the one that really started up high. Uh, got next to the rail and got the, you know, we'd always get the stripes on the side of the car running that cause of him days. So. Uh, now, if you, I guess if these guys get up there, they're kind of in trouble. They hit it very hard. But, uh, in the truck race, uh, the winner was thrown back to you. Is it a little bit of an honor to have some of the younger drivers throwing back to your paint schemes? Oh, it really was. That was, uh, you know, Bill McAnally, I used to drive uh, for him a few years back. And uh, he asked me about the throwback thing. And so it was quite an honor they painted that car up the roses. And, you know, the, the first car that I drove here was the same car that I won the Pan American Road Race with. And when we left, uh, we didn't have a sponsor or anything. We just thought Portland is known as a city of roses. So we painted the roses on there. And of course, they, that followed through. So, you know, it was the same year I won the Pan American and also come back here and ran the first race. Of course, we drove from Portland here and run the race and drove home. I did that twice. I did that in 51, too. <laughs> People can't imagine, but in them days, you know, they didn't have all the big motels and stuff we got nowadays. You could, they had these little places you could rent for 6 $7 a night, but uh, uh, I carried a pill. But, uh, you know, we had bench seats. There was no, no bucket seats in the cars in them days. So, uh, I always had a pill on it, and I brought it three or four hours to stop and sleep for a little while and get up and go again. I get cross country pretty good. Do you think you could uh, beat the drivers today if you were a little younger? Pardon? Do you think you could beat today's drivers if you were a little younger? Oh, I wouldn't say that, but it, you know, you always think that you could do that. And, um, and I, I can't get racing out of my system. And I'm of course, I'm only 95, so I got a while to go yet, I guess. Uh, but I always feel like I could get in a car and do pretty good. But I think with the technology and everything that they're doing, uh, I, I I feel that I drove in a in a just different area. I mean, the the current drivers today, uh, like over, I uh, talked to some of them, they can't imagine uh, how much uh, that I would run around the country just to race. And uh, of course, I was always a West Coast guy. And the re reason, you know, if you go back to the media, everything is East Coast, the pictures and the movies. I ran dozens and dozens of, of West and West races. And, but we didn't have the cameras, we didn't have the video, we didn't have the PR that you guys get. That's why if you look at my resume, resume it doesn't all look that hot, you know. I don't think even want to read it myself. But uh, I won a lot of races, short track races. That's not on the records. We didn't keep track in the day. So, uh, but I was happy to come back and do what I did. Uh, my affiliation with the Bill France Senior was beyond. Uh, you can tell when you have a uh, feeling for people. And uh, him and I got along really, really good. I had, uh, uh, in 54, when I came back and ran 17 races, you know, I flew a lot with him in the airplane doing PR. I, I'm not a mechanic. Never had a, I don't like to get that dirty for one thing. And them, got, and them days, everybody 
more coveralls pretty much in a race car and, and they worked on their own cars and so forth and, and I didn't work on mine much. I changed cars and did all the, all the service stuff but uh, as far as trying to make a race, I've drove pretty much what's off the street. So uh, that made a big difference but but running around with Bill uh, in the airplane and uh, I would go two or three days ahead and that's when television was just starting in 54 pretty much. It wasn't out to the west coast much yet but it was on the east coast and I do radio work and, and so uh, that's how uh, I became such a NASCAR fan was uh, being close to him to start with. And, you know, the other day, I, uh, when I got in the Hall of Fame, Jim France uh, put my coat on. And he said, I wish my dad could be here. So I said, well, Jim, oh, where are you? He says, six. So, well, there's some part of history. Goes back, uh, I have so many stories. Hard to hit them all in front. Is there a driver today who reminds you of yourself back in the day? Pardon me. Is there a driver from today who reminds you of yourself? Uh, well, I had not read. I'll tell you at the end of the day. But <laughs> I tell you, I was uh, on the throwback thing, the truck that that uh, the other kid won. That kid was awesome Friday night. I don't usually watch the truck races, but I watched that one because it was a throwback of the Oldsmobile that I drove here in 1950, you know, with the roses and everything on. And that kid did a great job, and so it was pretty nice. I know when I circle, I looked up, I see my name on the door. <laughs> that was different. Now you're still getting in the car in a few years, right? Getting back in the car, uh, 100? Now, now I've, uh, I have a promise of 100. Uh, well, I drive a car when I'm 100. And I'll see how that goes, you know. Uh, uh, Richard Childress is one of them, and Bill McAnally, the other got two, two offers. So, uh, hey, I, I'll, I'll probably do it. I'll probably do it. But I think I'll probably... Uh, drive a late model, maybe uh, for a few races ahead of time, and get myself uh, acclimated, make sure I can get it out of my car or anything. So, I, I'm pretty healthy, but I can't walk very good. You know, I got the stuff in my legs, but I uh, usually walk up for stability. But uh, I feel good. I ride a motorcycle or a tricycle a lot uh, at home, so I do stuff the younger guys do all the time. I have fun. So as you talk about the drivers of this generation, is there any advice that you would give any of the drivers from your many years of experience? Is there, is there advice that you would give some of this, this new generation of drivers? Um, yes. Um, I would say quit doing, when you win a race, quit doing the spin-outs. I'm tired of the spin-outs, you know. I love Carl Edwards. He did something different. He did a backflip. And I'm sure they could figure out something. Uh, now the five car did something different the other day. He, he did a, a reverse spin out, spinning his wheels around the track. Where was that at? I don't remember. Martinsville. But I, but I thought they don't need to do that. I mean, I, and another thing I think would be nice if after a race, in a verse, interview first, second, third. Because second, third were just as hard as that guy that won the race. And they, I think they deserve, especially sometimes a guy that's been leading all day, he ends up you know, uh, second and third, some guy beating. I think that would be helpful. That's why I like about Formal One, uh, they do that, and, uh, and uh, all three guys, we can talk to them. So uh, there's a few things I think that could change that I would like. I, I don't have much to, much to say about it. What's it like being here this weekend with all the other 75? Uh, you know, uh, in that room, uh, I had guessed out of the first 50, which I was in in 1997, uh, I, would, I know 30 of them were dead that I knew. Uh, that left 20. And then, of course, we got the 25 in. So I figured 20 and 25 would be here, and I thought, 
15 of the first 50 would be here. So that's 35. I missed it by three <laughs> or four. There was 31, I think, in the room there a while ago. But to, but to be in that room with the guys that I ran with, which is only, there was only six or seven guys that were in the first 50 that were here. So uh, a lot of them maybe are home, maybe they're still alive, but uh, somebody probably has all that information. But uh, uh, to be in that group was quite an honor for me. And, uh, and so many of them have complimented me on my uh, speech at the Hall of Fame uh, that I was inducted in, you know, uh, in January. So it's uh, a very, very humbling experience for me. Percy, your best finish here was the next year in 1951. What do you remember about the Griffin Motors that you took the first place here? I don't. They didn't pay me any money. <laughs> there was no money involved, just they helped me on my crew, and uh, which was good. So uh, that was worth a lot to me. You know, I ended up uh, fourth place. Uh,